Welcome to Pearl Jaka, Charito Zara Sri, Srimad Bhaktivedanta Swami Shula Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnupad, Paramahansa of Pearl Jaka, Charito Zara Sri, Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Maharaj Shula Prabhupada Ki Jai. Grantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai. All glories to the Semi devotees. All glories to the Semi devotees. All glories, all glories to the Semi devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Sri Guru and Gauranga. Uh oh. Um, I forgot my glasses. I did. I think so. Can't see a thing without my glasses. How did I forget my glasses? I don't know. Um, sorry. Anyone know what verse we're at? Oh, I have my glasses on. What am I doing? I thought they weren't there. How did you know? How did you Um. Is this the right canto? I have canto one, chapter 14. Okay, here it is, chapter 15, text number one. So I'll do 15 through, um, chapter 15, text one through four. There's a short purport on one and two verses without purports and then text four will have a short purport also, but I'll stop at four. So I'll, I'll read text one. Sutta Goswami said, Arjuna, the celebrated friend of Lord Krishna, was grief-stricken because of his strong feelings of separation from Krishna. Over and above, all Maharaj Yudhisthira's speculative inquiries. Purport. Being too much aggrieved, Arjuna became choked up, and therefore it was not possible for him to reply properly to the various speculative inquiries of Maharaj Yudhisthira. Text number two. Due to grief, Arjuna's mouth and lotus-like heart had dried up. Therefore, his body lost all luster. Now remembering the Supreme Lord, he could hardly utter a word in reply. Text three. With great difficulty, he checked the tears of grief that smeared his eyes. He was very distressed because Lord Krishna was out of his sight and he increasingly felt affection for him. So text number four. Sakyam maitring sarhidangcha Saratyadishu sangsmaran Nripamagrajamityaha Bhashpadgad Gadayagira Sakyam Maitring Sauridangcha Saratyadishu Sangsmaran Nripamagrajata Mityaha Bhashpagad Gadayagira Sakyam Maitring Sauridangcha Saratyadishu Sangsmaran Nripamagraja Mityaha Bhashpagad Gadayagira Sakya Maitring Saridangcha Saratyadishu Sangsmaran 
विपमाग्रज मिचा पाष्पगदया गिरा साख्य मैत्री सौहृद सारचादिषु संस्मरण नृपमग्रजमीचा पाष्पगदया गिरा साख्य मैत्री सौरी साराचादिषु संस्मरण नृपमग्रचतमिया भाष्पगदया गिरा साख्य मैत्री सौरी शारदाजीषु संस्मरण नृपमग्रचमिया पाष्पगदया गिरा मातजीस सख्य भगदया गिरा साख्य मैत्री सौरी साराथ्यादिषु संस्मरण दीपमग्रजत मिचा भाष्पगदया गिरा सख्यम well wishing my dream benediction so ridam intimately related cha also saratya adishu in becoming the chariot driver sang smaran remembering all these in vipam unto the king agrajam the eldest brother iti thus aha said bashpa heavily breathing gadgadaya overwhelming gira by speeches translation remembering lord krishna and his well wishes benefactions intimate familial relations and his chariot driving arjuna overwhelmed and breathing very heavily began to speak please repeat remembering lord krishna and his well wishes benefactions intimate familial relations and his chariot driving arjuna overwhelmed and breathing very heavily began to speak so these this should be our symptoms every day we see these pictures of his uh, familial relations we see his chariot driving we see his uh, we can remember his well wishes and benefactions that we should all become uh, have very 
overwhelming symptoms and began to have heart throbbing, breathing very heavily. These are, Arjuna's feeling in this way, he's very advanced devotee. These are very uh, elevated symptoms of a devotee in relation. So you have that verse, Yogi Nama Pi Sarvesham. Of all the yogis, you know, those who are intimately united with Krishna, they're considered very, very elevated, the highest of all. So this is Arjuna. He's a very intimate and uh, friend and relative of Krishna. And he had a very intimate association with the Supreme Lord. Even one time Arjuna was apologizing to, Ar to Arjuna because sometimes they would, I mean, Arjuna was apologizing to Krishna because sometimes they would sit on the same bed together joking and sometimes Arjuna would make insults and, you know, joking insults, you know, competitive and, uh, you know, and so forth. So he, uh, he apologized uh, upon realizing that Krishna is, the, and he's not just my friend, he's like the original and the supreme personality of Godhead. And so he apologized for if he had made any, made any offenses. So very interesting. So, purport by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. The Supreme Living Being is perfect in all relations with His pure devotee. Sri Arjun is one of the typical pure devotees of the Lord, reciprocating in the fraternal relationship, and the Lord's dealing with Arjuna are displays of friendship of the highest perfect order. He was not only a well-wisher of Arjuna, but actually a benefactor. And to make it still more perfect, the Lord tied him into a family relationship by arranging, arranging Subhadra's marriage with him. And above all, the Lord agreed to become a chariot driver of Arjuna in order to protect his friend from warfare risks. And the Lord became actually happy when he established the Pandavas to rule over the world. Arjuna remembered all these one after another, and thus he became overwhelmed with such thoughts. <clears throat> so Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was in that also always overwhelmed. It's amazing how the Lord can feel such great uh, feelings for himself. He's meditating on himself. And then he, still he's becoming by himself. You know, Krishna, he looks in the mirror and he, oh my God, you know, I, I, am, a, I am a beautiful person. <laughs> he's, you know, he's, he's overwhelmed by himself. Lord, Ch Lord Chaitanya was overwhelmed by thinking of Krishna. So this is the in any way you relate from whatever angle of uh, understanding, the understanding of spiritual life is an overwhelming ocean of transcendental bliss. Anandam Bhuti Vardhanam. So very powerful force, this spiritual life. Um, in the beginning, we may not experience so much because we're overwhelmed by the uh, covering of matter, earth, fire, water, air, ether, mind, intelligence, false ego. And we are very tiny, a tiny spiritual atom. One ten thousandth the size of the topmost part of a hair. That's how big, very, very small, very tiny. Prabhupada sometimes describes, you know, spiritual atoms. Spiritual atoms are everywhere. They permeate and per pervade everything. They permeate and pervade the Brahma Jyoti shining, you know, making effulgence. So the living entity, very small, is shining within this body. Or else how, how could we see our dreams? You know, we're dreaming. We sometimes dreams are very vivid, very bright. Where does that light come from? That light is coming from the living entity, the soul. So the living entity's consciousness in this material body is it's 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 spread all over this whole body. 
consciousness is uh, and one one time I read this Buddhist book long time I was I think I was way back in the Navy somebody gave me this book the Supreme Doctrine we all know that the Supreme Doctrine is Bhagavad Gita Srimad Bhagavad this Supreme Doctrine but this Supreme Doctrine was a psychological studies in Zen uh, in the Zen philosophy anyway I remember one passage when I was thinking how the living entity pervades the entire body they say that the realization of I guess the realization out of Zen philosophy will permeate and pervade one's entire being you know, when you come to Krishna consciousness, you think about that. What are they saying? Pervade and permeate one's entire being with what? Nothingness? Uh, void? You know, what's the, what is the value? You know, so, so anyway, we know consciousness pervades and permeates our entire body. It pervades our body. And that's all that we can pervade. We don't become God and become one and pervade the whole universe. We can't, that's beyond our understanding to become God or become so falsely egoistic where we think we're God or we, we're the lords of all we survey. We're so tiny. We're so insignificantly small. Uh, so, but dwelling within this city of nine gates we think this city is so great but the consciousness in this body is is it's is fragmented how how are we fragmented we have senses five uh knowledge acquiring senses you know what are these one is the skin you know sometimes you hear Prabhupada talk about skin disease so we have the skin. That's one of one of this, and so we have consciousness pervading this skin, you know, making making us think we're you know we're beautiful, you know, they, you know they make up and stuff on the you know and build the bodies, and we look at the skin and we begin to think that we're the skin, but beneath the skin is all sorts of abominable mucus, bile, air, pus, stool, urine very abominable so just one layer of skin but anyway this the skin disease we think we have bodily relations here you hear relations of Krishna and Arjuna or Krishna and the his mother and father Krishna relating with his friends these perfect relationships you know but in this material world we try to make perfect relationships on the basis of this sense perception of our skin yeah, how ridiculous it is, how ludicrous to think that we can have uh, nice relationships with this thin layer of matter covering this body, you know, skin. Uh, so like that, we think my wife, my country, my society, my family, my children, all on the basis of this skin. So, Savaupati Vinir Muktam Tat Paratarena Nirmalam. So we have to become nirmalam, completely cleansed, completely uh, purified nirmalam of this skin disease, which, which makes us think that this body and our relations are the all in all. But it's because it's not. So like that. So the consciousness is pervaded in the skin and he thinks he, the skin is dictating all kinds of you know, with the element of false ego dictating all sorts of identities, all sorts of uh, fear and paranoia, you know, it's all dictated from the skin. You know, so then you have, you know, you have consciousness in the skin and then you have consciousness in the eyes. You know, the eyes are looking, this imperfect eyes, imperfect sense is looking around and gathering information you know, and the living entity becomes convinced. So, and then you have, you know, internal. You have your eyes. You have your ears, hearing. Little holes. You have eight, eight, nine, nine gates to this body. That um, <clears throat> part of them are knowledge acquiring, and some are, are are active, acting senses, like the. So, and, and then you have your internal. You have your belly. 
You know, so the, there's this consciousness in your belly. The consciousness that's there in the belly is, is, is the same consciousness, but it feels different in the brain. You know, the brain is like this mind packed up, always packed up with desires coming from this. Just packed, the head becomes so dull with so many desires. So the living entity, he has no uh, higher, you know, he can't really understand what it means when it says perfect relationships because our consciousness is all divided up in this way. You know, what to speak of the influence of the consciousness that's there in the genital or consciousness, you know, that's, that's there in the tongue for taste, you know, desire to taste. So the living entity is there, he's, and he's trapped and caged. And, you know, he's got consciousness here doing this, consciousness there, doing, you know. His consciousness is not like whole. It's all chopped up amongst these the senses of the body. But to make, to become free, one has to have the good fortune like Arjun to have Krishna's constant association. Because Arjun had Krishna's constant association, he had the experience of experiencing that perfect uh, blissfulness, you know, the oneness of consciousness, you know, where you're not being, you know, sub submitting oneself to the dictates of the mind, tongue, belly, genital, uh, skin, you know, you know, submitting to hear this, submitting to, to see that. Because the living entity is by nature submissive. But in conditioned life, the living entity doesn't feel that he's submissive because he's forgetful of his original position of uh, being predominated by the supreme predominator, Krishna. We are always predominated. And we forget that our nature is to be submissive. So the first process in God realization is submissive hearing about the topics of the Supreme Lord. So, but this, we you know, in in a when one has this uh, contamination of false egoism, he think, I am doing this, I, you know, I, I. But he doesn't think that he's forced by Maya to do this or to do that. You know, we're forced to go evacuate. We're forced to eat because we're hungry. But in a false egoistic state, we think, I'm hungry. I want to eat. Or I'm, you know, uh, becoming this type of agitation or that type of agitation. And immediately we think, oh, I want to, I, I'll go and I'll, I'll do this. But he's not thinking that he cannot analytically understand that he's been forced by nature because his nature is submissive and he's forced to engage in all different various types of activities. So we have the, we have the Shastra to uh, somehow regulate, all, regulate these senses in order that they can become purified, in order that we don't uh, listen to the dictates. So we have this process of submissive hearing, learning how to be submissive. So if we can capture that spirit where we, where we can feel submissive and learn that we are being predominated and that we're not controllers, we're not enjoyers, we're not, you know, at this point, well-wishing friend of all every living entity, you know, we're not the, uh, you know, proprietor and so forth. But we can by submissively learning that we are submissive in nature and hearing submissively the topics about the Supreme Lord. So we have to apply our feelings, our feelings of submissiveness in the beginning. You know, submit ourselves. Okay, Krishna, at least, at least philosophically you can say, okay, Krishna, you're great. Krishna, I'm very small. Let me take shelter. We can pray in that way. Let me take shelter. But it's by the process of feeling submissive to these topics that our submissiveness will actually increase in 
our consciousness will increase. Our consciousness will expand. By not just by feeling predominated, but by we can start to begin to feel some something friendly towards the Supreme Lord. You know, we can uh, feel we can develop favorable feelings. This, this is our faith. You know that we become favorable. We develop you know faith, a little affection for the Supreme Lord begins to develop from the from feeling submissive, and then we begin to feel some attraction but this is all comes by uh, feelingly submissively hearing and then by we can begin to make progress uh, as our you know and developed in developing our consciousness to another degree so the ultimate goal the whole combination of this 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 connection or this yoga is to you know, the perfection of that yoga is to, you know, to love Krishna, to get that love, to feel love for Krishna. That's the ultimate goal. But <clears throat> the living entities is right in the, he's like packed up, especially when there's so many, the senses are always dictating. They're, they, they're like, they're like trapped or connected to the mind. You know, the senses, the mind is the central point of our hands, our legs, our belly, tongue, genital, our ears, our eyes. The mind is right there. So the mind is collecting here in our brain. And then eventually the head becomes very dull, very painful, burning like fire, these material desires, misery. You know, I mean, I'm sure everybody has experienced the dull head and the misery that's there in the head. You know, but what is that misery? It's a living entity suffering like anything under the influence of all these different desires. And what is the living? What? But what, what is that consciousness trying to do? That consciousness of the living entity, who's situated in the heart, his consciousness spread all over this body, is wanting pleasure. He's seeking his own nature. It's like they say, water will find its way. It's like if the in the Pujai room, you know, if they leave all the water on the counter everywhere, eventually that water will find its way behind. It finds it. It'll find its way. You know, un, you know, it'll 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 pervade everything. I, I mean, I tried to seal everything up real good so that nothing can pervade into the, you know, the inner places of the, you know, to make rot and mold and attract roaches and all these things, you know, just water. So the living entity is conscious also, it's like, it's seeking its own nature. You know, it's it's trying to come out from this dull brain. It, it wants to experience satisfaction and bliss. But we just don't know how to get that consciousness through. You know, they sing the break on through to the other side. You know, they got to break on through, you know. But we don't know how to break on through, you know. But it's a simple process to break through. We just have to take our feelings there and we have to put them into Krishna. And then the, 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 our consciousness, our, our tiny little feelings of submissiveness and surrender and the little love we have, well, that's, that's what will just float right through. So simple process. But we, got the, we suffered this dull head and then what, we, we, we want to take pleasure in sleeping. So our consciousness goes and our life airs go, then Maya comes and you know all the modes of nature and all the strings of the demigods, you know, puppet us to the bed we just lay down so our skin can feel the nice soft bed and we feel very comfortable in our skin we put our head on a pillow and then we try to enjoy sleep just to forget it just to get away from you know from the fatigue and the dullness of this you know consciousness trapped suffering there in this brain but ultimately what this brain wants to do, the dictates of the brain, the brain wants to lord over everything. The brain wants to be the controller. The brain wants everybody to be under his influence. That's, that's the mystic power. That's one of the cities. That's, you know, the eight 
Eightfold Mystics, Mystics of the Eightfold Mystic Yoga System. And one of the brain has that power to bring people under influence. The mind in the chakra in the between the eyebrows that wants to do everything. He wants every full he wants he wants every desire fulfilled, nothing frustrated. So that's why the living entity is there and he's suffering because these dictates of the brain are promising this type of mystic power to the living entity. If I can do this, I can do anything. I can make I can be successful, I can make millions, I can you know, so many dictates are there. And we're suffering due to these mature seeds of desire in the brain. But if we just take our misery, that's what we're feeling there, misery. But if we just connect that misery with Krishna, all those miseries will evaporate. I mean, not the misery, but all those desires and all those dictations will just evaporate. And one can elevate. One can come out from this... From this uh, dense darkness of matter and it can actually feel satisfied feel enlightened <clears throat> and then you know we, we get we get one misery out there okay then we have some some confidence that if i take my hunger in my belly if i don't just rush to those dictates and go fill my belly nine times a day go steal the maha now go steal it there you know i remember the offering of sweet rice not even offered and somebody goes in they were, you know, due to their hunger and the, the, the demanding of the tongue they would break into the maha cabinet the locks in Hawaii and they would and they would steal a big half gallon of sweet rice and you know the deity wouldn't even get any you know so this is the, 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 the this consciousness you know it's just our we, we want pleasure we want we want satisfaction, and it, like through the senses, it comes out all perverted in perverted ways, you know. But if we if we can if we can just take a pause, you know, and we get hungry, take a little pause, geez, and take those feelings, which is really your 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 consciousness, the influence of the soul that's being influenced by this belly and making the living entity feel hungry. And then illusing you think that you got to eat. If you don't eat, you're going to die. But the living entity never dies. It can't be cut into pieces. It can't. It can't be suffer any disease. It can't. But in this body, we're thinking, well, we're going to, we're going to die. We're going to suffer. We're going to. Everything's going to be a failure. You know, you're all paranoid. You know. So vita bhaya raga krodha. You know, we're we're we're. Uh, Krishna says, you got to become free from this fear, from this anger. You got to become free from the misery. You got to become f free from attachment. You know, attachment to the tongue, tasting, and we got to we got to get control. But the only way we can get control is that we have to put our feelings into Krishna and expand our consciousness. When you expand your consciousness, you have some attraction and love for Krishna. Then everything comes under control everything falls into place your consciousness you know they say get it together man jeez what are you doing you know spacing out get it together yeah so your consciousness has to come together you know the consciousness that's there in the belly the consciousness in the general consciousness in the tongue by even even our lusty agitations our sex agitations we have to put those feelings on Krishna. Then all the perverted desires evaporate and the consciousness becomes pure. Then all of these different consciousnesses that we have in our body will all become one and all for Krishna's interests. Not for the interests of satisfying the belly or satisfying the tongue, but to satisfy Krishna. And then we don't become uh, overwhelmed by you know, miserable conditions of life. We become free. Because Krishna, he's not going to frustrate you. If you can put your feelings there, put your attraction there, put your affection there, Krishna will immediately reciprocate. And he'll, you know, how to say in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, I am the support. So we can, we can do this only you know, uh, what's that verse? Ya sashta vidhimut srija fartate kama karataha. You know, not by our whims, 
not by rejecting the shasha and, and acting, because if we do that without our whims, by our whims and reject shastra, just I don't, you know, even there's even Ayurvedic shastra to regulate your eating, regulate your sleeping, regulate, re, you know, recreation, regulate everything, regulate it, you know, and then and then you can feel peaceful, and you can achieve perfection, you know, then you achieve Krishna's love, which is perfect. You know, relations in this world, you have, you relate, you relate, how they say familiarity breeds contempt. You know, it's just, we can't relate on the basis of the skin. It, it'll always be disappointing. You know, we have families, we have country, society, and everybody knows in this family, country, society, friendship, and so-called love, there's always disappointment. And nobody has developed consciousness enough to tolerate these disappointments. So immediately, you know, married couples, they have one disappointment, oh, immediately divorce, you know. And or, or, or friendships break up, or people shoot each other over little fight, make wars over borders, you know. Geez, encroaching one, you know. I know people with a fence line between the houses, you know, by, hey, your fence is one foot on my property. You know, what's the value of that one foot of property, you know, but they'll make big fight, court, litigations, all sorts of trouble just for a fence line. You know, so disappointments, but you know, it's my neighbor, you're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself, but no, you'll, you'll take your neighbor to court for, you know, driving on over the corner of your grass and ruining, you know, it's just ridiculous. So the relationship with Krishna is not like that. Krishna does not, if you give your, if you put your feelings into Krishna, he will not disappoint you. And you know, we, we, like in the beginning of the class, I said we are, Krishna is the predominator and we are being predominated. But it's a fact, it's, it's related there in the Shastra that if you learn to love Krishna, you become the predominator and Krishna will become the predominated. How is that possible? How the great supreme God will become the uh, subject of the one ten thousand the size of the tip of the hair living entity. This is the wonderful Krishna consciousness. And Krishna in, in his relating, he will never disappoint. It's like they say Krishna is like the he'll become he'll be the perfect husband. He'll become the perfect politician. He'll never disappoint his citizens. As like in, in the kingdom of Lord Ram. You know, there was no death for people who didn't want it. You know, there was no mental disturbances. There was no uh, bereavement. There was no lamentation. Because Krishna was the, the Lord there, Lord Ram. And there was no, no disturb, no mental, no crazy people, no disturbances. It was just like L.A., you know, no disturbances of heat, excessive heat, or excessive cold, you know. It's amazing. The weather here is just amazing. I'll never forget it. And all the wonderful devotees here, I'll never forget you all. Just uh, thank you very much for letting me uh, stay here and work here and uh, encouraging me. And it was a big project to bite off in the Pajari room, feeling a little anxiety. But everybody was very patient, not demanding, when, when, when? Of course, in the beginning, how long, how long? But then later, as it was developing, everybody got very uh, encouraging. And if everybody started planning how they're going to do this, that, everyone got involved. It was all very nice. So uh, thank you very much, everyone. I'll be leaving in a day or two. And Hare Krishna. Any questions or comments at this point? Srila Prabhupada Kija. So before we go, we would like to express our gratitude and thanks to uh, Sri Rak Prabhu and his family for the wonderful service that he uh, performed here for the Pajari Room. Well beyond our expectations. We had no idea, but now we do have an idea. So we'd like to give a real Heartfelt thank you for your nice devotional service and you'll always be remembered here as that person who did that wonderful service for Rukmini Dwarkadish. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. 
And thank you, thank you for the wonderful class. It was just a last minute arrangement. Somebody else was actually scheduled to give class today. So you had no time to prepare and you heard the quality of the class. Thank you very much. Papa used to say that he would, he would ask his friends to give one son to Christian consciousness. So can you leave one of your sons here? <laughs> they're, they're both such great musicians and chanters and we just love them. If one here would really appreciate it. I have to leave them at another time. <laughs> All right, well.